the term push-pull operation is a term that's more often than not not totally understood in the rail fan community. Usually, when you hear someone refer to a train as a push-pull train, they'll be talking about having a locomotive on both ends of that train. And although this is technically accurate, it is not the only example of a push-pull train operation, as I'll explain. Push-pull train operation is a configuration for locomotive haul trains that allows them to be driven from either end of the train, whether having a locomotive at each end or not. That's important. One example of a push-pull train is a train that has a locomotive at one end of the train that's connected via some form of remote control, such as a multiple unit train control, to a vehicle equipped with a control cab at the other end of the train. The second vehicle may be another locomotive, or an unpowered control car. This is the type of push-pull operation that you typically see on commuter trains in heavily populated urban areas on lines such as the SEPTA, the New Jersey Transit, and the Metro North here in the Northeast. Despite the appearance, the two out-of-place Canadians on this train which has just come out of the Allentown Yard and over the Lehigh River and into Bethlehem, Pennsylvania are technically not in push-pull operation mode, but rather in pull-pull operation. The friendly engineer pulled the train out of the yard, dismounted, walked to the rear of the train, and boarded the SD-70 M-2 to proceed westbound over the former Lehigh Valley and Reading lines. And did you notice that EOT device on the M-2? If not, go back and take a look again. This is why I call the M-2 end of the train the rear of the train. It's December 15, 2017, and it's just another typical dreary gray overcast day in eastern Pennsylvania. Pay attention to that date because it's important. I don't know where the far from home Canadians were destined to, but the SD-75I number 5643, built in 1996, showed up almost a week later on December 21st in the consist of then train 14R providing power and propulsion to move the tonnage northbound to Binghamton, New York. More likely than not, the millennial EMD will be taken off this train in Binghamton and will be placed in the consist of the next 31T train bound for the Canadian National Interchange at Rouses Point, New York on the extreme northern New York-Canadian border. Remember I told you to remember the day, December 15? Hot off of the memory card, I shot this train yesterday, six years later, to the day, on December 15, 2023. The train is the Roanoke, Virginia to Binghamton, New York bound 10Z, and is pretty much the former 14R, which became the 14Z for about two weeks in 2020, then became the 12Z, 
And now, the Tenzi. Who can keep up? At around 50 degrees with clear blue skies and not a trace of snow to be found, today's weather is a definite upgrade to that of Bethlehem's back in 2017. But the reason that I had to include this train in this video, besides the coincidental date of course, is the power. Distributed power, sometimes called DP for short, is a generic term referring to the physical distribution at intermediate points throughout the length of a train of separate motive power groups. Such groups may be single units or multiple unit consists and are remotely controlled from the leading locomotive. This practice allows locomotives to be placed anywhere within the length of a train when standard multiple unit or MU operation is impossible or impractical. DP can be achieved by wireless RF connectivity or wired train line means. Wired systems now provided by various suppliers use the cabling already extant throughout the train that's equipped with electronically controlled pneumatic brakes, otherwise known as ECP. DP trains, or trains with distributed power, are now common on the NSDNH lines. Today's train has an EMD SD70 ACE on the point and an ES44 AC GVO on the rear. Back in the summer of 2020, I caught this RNN push-pull train, the YJPI, entering Taylor Yard to do this day's work. You may have noticed that the GP38-2 number 2010 wasn't providing any power. That's because it's being used today as a shoving platform and that man at the helm is actually the conductor. GP38-2 number 2012 push this train all the way up from Pittston Yard and will pull the 2010 and any cars picked up at Taylor back to Pittston. On a cold and windy Sunday morning a few weeks back, November 19 of this year to be exact, another RNN yard job was working the Taylor Interchange. Same details as the first RNN train in this video, except now the 2012 is the shoving platform and the power is former NSSD40-2, now numbered for the RNN at 3069. The flexi-coil trucks on the vintage EMD is an easy identifier of its big blue Conrail heritage.
In today's GEVO saturated world that is modern class 1 railroading, it's nice to know that you can still find EMD leading and sometimes dominating lash ups out on the high iron. Union Pacific and our own Norfolk Southern are two such class 1 railroads where EMDs are still in force. Today's train is another 10Z which I recorded back on November 10 of this year and is another example of push-pull distributed power operation. But another term that could also be used to describe this train is top and tail. A top and tail railway train has locomotives at both ends, often times for ease of changing direction, especially where the terminal station has no run around loop. This is a British term and here in the USA, top and tail is also typically used to describe commuter and sometimes short local trains. In traditional top and tail operation, it's typically normal for only the leading locomotive to power the train. It's properly distinct from a push-pull train which has a locomotive at one end and a control cab at the other end. Top and tail operation is also used for ballast trains which have to move up and down a line undergoing track maintenance. It's safer to drive these trains from the front when operating in reverse. Are you confused yet? One last railroad term used for trains with locomotives on both ends is a term called bookending. Call them what you fancy, push-pull top and tail or book ending, the proper term is in the eye of the beholder. Each term has its own specific usage while each term can be used universally in one way or another. Out on the main line is where these operations shine and my thanks goes to conductor trainee Joe Green for the information on this train. Enjoy this train and watch it till the end because the best part is coming up from behind.